Hello Internet. Today's project is the making of this jewelry box using a CNC router. This 3D model was created using Fusion 360 software. The jewelry box has five drawers shown here and a false drawer at the top. Swing out wings are available for hanging jewelry. The design is based on a jewelry box shown by Mark Spagnolo on his Wood Whisperer YouTube channel back in 2018. Here is a glimpse of the shop drawing I prepared for this project. Here is the plank of walnut used for the project. That end was the striking figure used for the top. And here is the plank of curly maple used from, for the project. Uh, it's marked out for the parts with chalk and pencil. First step is cutting the planks to more manageable lengths using the radial arm saw. Next step is to plane one face perfectly flat of each plank using a joiner. After one face is perfectly flat, the other face is also flattened and made parallel using a planer. Planer is also used to bring the pieces to final thickness. Here a dovetail bit is mounted in the CNC router as being used to route the pockets for the sliding dovetail joints that hold the side of the case to the bottom. Here the CNC router is using a quarter inch end mill to cut the curved front of the bottom piece of the jewelry box. There was a major imperfection in the piece of walnut being used for the top that I filled in with uh, epoxy that had been dyed black. And here we're milling the dried epoxy with the CNC router to bring it flat near to the surface of the uh, plank of wood. Now the dovetail bit is mounted in the router table and it will be used to cut the dovetail at the bottom of the sides that will fit in those sockets cut earlier. A plank of straight southern yellow pine is clamped to the side to keep it straight. And here is a photo of the sides dry fitted in the dovetail sockets. The dovetails were trimmed on the table saw using the table saw sled. Next we're using a quarter inch end mill in the CNC router to route out the features of the sides. And here is a completed side. The ends of the dados were squared up using a chisel. Turning to the drawers now, we're cutting the drawer fronts 
on the table saw to final length. My shop built CNC vise is used to hold the drawer fronts while rabbits are cut on the ends of the drawer fronts using the CNC router. You can see the making of the vise in another video in my channel. Here we're clamping the drawer fronts in a fixture that will hold the fronts while we're cutting the pin sockets for the drawers. Joint cam software was used to make the tool pass for all of the dovetail joints in the drawers. Next, the dovetails in the drawer sides are cut. Here we're using the router table to cut grooves in the drawer sides that will hold the drawer bottom. The drawer fronts have been dry fitted with the drawer sides and that's allowing us to precisely mark where the groove needs to go on the drawer side. A 6 inch steel rule provides a precise 1 32nd for spacing. And here we're using the router table to cut grooves in the drawer sides for the drawer glides. A little hand planing was required for a precise drawer fit. A dial gauge was used to make sure a fixture for holding the drawer fronts was precisely aligned with the CNC router. And now we're getting set to cut the curved fronts on the drawers. This is a half inch end mill with a two and a quarter inch cutting length. Now we'll turn to the milling of these little feet. And here are four completed feet. Here we're milling pin sockets for the wing doors. And now some dovetails for the wing doors. One of the features of this design is the front styles of the wing doors have to be curved to match the drawer fronts. Here we're making a fixture to hold the drawer styles for the cutting of that subtle curve. 
this is the style that I'm talking about and the curve is the part of the style that's at the top in this orientation. The part is actually held in the fixture by these sort of Gibbs screws that are clamped down into the fixture. A half inch ball nose end mill is being used for a roughing pass that will be followed by a finishing pass to complete the subtle curve on these styles. And here is the finishing pass nearing its completion. This two inch diameter router bit in the router table will be used to give a profile on the edges of the panels in the window. Everything is dry assembled and clamped together and placed on the back for a sanding to make sure everything is flush. All the mortises for the Brasso hinges were cut with a 1 8 inch end mill on the CNC. Here the mortises in the wing door is being cut. A precise tight fitting hinge mortise is a big help in assembling the hinges to the project. Here we're milling the magnet pocket for the secret compartment key. The main carcass is being finished before final assembly, so the areas to be glued are masked off. First finishing step is tried and true Danish oil finish, followed by water locks, both applied with cheesecloth. After several days of drying, Johnson paste wax was applied with 4 aught steel wool. And here is the final assembly of the finished parts. To provide for extra open time, liquid hide glue was used. Here are the dovetail joints going together. The secret panel has to be inserted before the uh, sides are fully seated, otherwise the thing won't go together.
glue squeezed out is cleaned up with a damp rag. The false drawer front is glued in at the top. The operation of the secret compartment is tested to make sure I didn't glue in the sliding panel. Brasso hinges are carefully installed with brass screws. CNC mortises provide a snap fit. The secret compartment key works with magnets. And here's a look at the final project. Thanks for watching.